Okay, now we're going to just flip over to chapter 3, 3-1, and we're going to start in with some surface preparation. And for the next few slides, we're going to talk about what we have in chapter 3, and it should be fairly easy for you to follow along. You need to start with a pavement that's clean. Okay, how are we going to clean the pavement? You're going to clean it with, uh, uh, you know, we're talking now in the fall of the year when leaves are falling. We're using a lot of uh, uh, leaf blowers or truck-mounted blowers to get, uh, uh, to get leaves that are falling out of the trees down. Prior to a crew showing up, you may actually need to use some high pressure water to clean oil spots or petroleum leaks of some kind. Uh, certainly mechanical sweeping, uh, whether it's a front mount power broom or a vacuum truck uh, meant to vacuum the uh, material off the roadway and create a, a clean, dry surface. Any vegetation that's out there needs to be removed. Trimming trees ahead of a slurry seal or a microsurfacing operation um, you know, the, these, these paving trains are going to have trucks the size of tandem sized dump trucks. And in a neighborhood in particular where uh, we might have a tree or a canopy of, of trees, um, it's, uh, it's a good thing to, to think about trimming these trees back or they will be trimmed by the equipment half the time. Uh, patching, crack sealing. Uh, we've uh, talked about the importance of crack sealing in combination with slurry seal or microsurfacing. Uh, localized patching. Uh, certainly if you've got utility cuts that need to be leveled, if you've got uh, some localized failures that need to be cut and patched. Uh, line eradication. Over time we have found that um, thermoplastic paints, tape markings, uh, especially at crosswalks and symbol, uh, symbols and, uh, and emblems. Uh, slurry seals and microsurfacings don't adhere very well to these, these uh, slicker type of uh, uh, type of pavement markings. Uh, so we're going to need to eradicate them. Uh, castings and appurtenances for water valves and drop inlets and, and manholes um, need to protect them and we'll see, uh, we'll see some examples of how to protect them so that uh, utilities can be located uh, once a project is complete. Clean pavement is a must. Use whatever you need to get it done. Uh, with vacuum sweeper, front mount power broom, uh, uh, again, a leaf blower, uh, sometimes immediately preceding a paving train uh, is, is necessary. Get rid of the vegeta vegetation. The grass will come back if it's not killed and taken care of. The picture there, the big picture on the left, uh, is actually a, a shot of a slurry seal job a month after it was installed. There was no effort made to do any vegetation removal or kill the grass. Uh, uh, Contractor nearly had to mow that road before, before paving it. Uh, there was no effort again made to get rid of the grass, and so it came back in no time at all. All right, tree trimming. Uh, one way or the other, the trees are going to get <laughs> get trimmed. Uh, picture on the left here is a nice shaded uh, residential street that had in their uh, uh, pre-planning uh, some tree trimming. Uh, cutting back some of the vegetation was done ahead of the slurry seal operation going through that neighborhood uh, so that the height of the truck could pass under the limbs of the trees without uh, causing any problems. Whereas on the right hand side, uh, that, that particular agency uh, chose not to uh, do any, any tree trimming and the truck as it was trying to pave the road did it for them. And you can see that the, the lumps of stuff uh, in the mat there were actually tree leaves off of the limbs that were that were disrupted when the truck went underneath uh, the canopy and before the leaves could get blown off of the pavement it was just immediately uh, those leaves got caught up in the spreader box of the paver uh, and all of a sudden became part of the road so uh, pre-planning uh, ahead of time could have alleviated that problem there. It created a, uh, a bit of a problem in a uh, return uh, for some remedial work. Proper patching again. You don't want a road that's so deteriorated that you're going to spend all your time in prep. Um, I don't know, a rule of thumb may be 20 to 30 percent of a road surface if it requires cut patching ahead of a slurry seal operation you're probably losing the bang for buck uh, economic benefit of slurry surfacing applications. Picture on the left there, you can see maybe it was a, uh, a, just a localized failure that was cut and patched. They had some cracks that needed to be sealed and not depend on the slurry seal to take care of their issue there for them. Uh, 
picture in the top center, uh, very structurally sound pavement out in the country, some surface cracking that was addressed ahead of time, and now they've created a very good candidate for, for slurry surfacing applications. And on the right-hand side here, we're some a little bit more random patches than in the, uh, the residential area there, uh, but they were all uh, repaired, uh, milled out, repaired back to a depth of two to three inches, and now you've got a structurally sound pavement uh, ready to uh, receive the microsurfacing in that case. Some minor areas that uh, uh, have surface cracking in them can be repaired uh, with a, a typical surface treatment type of skin patch. Picture on the left there. Um, there are some spots in the state that uh, do this quite aggressively. I would caution uh, a, when utilizing this type of skin patch uh, application. Uh, in this case, they're using uh, obviously an asphalt emulsion and the cover aggregate is nothing more than a number nine stone, which is a very, very fine stone. Uh, it can make for a very pretty patch, a very effective patch. Um, field experience has shown that whether it's not using enough cover aggregate or too much emulsion, that's a very hard patch to do and do effectively, especially when you're going to be covering it up with a, a slurry surfacing, real thin type of a mix, uh, particularly one like a slurry seal that's high in, in, in asphalt content to start with. We'll get into uh, uh, the propensity for bleeding surfaces in a few minutes. Um, uh, you get a secondary road such as the one here on the right. A uh, uh, little bit of a shoulder drop off, not bad. There was no real structural issues with the road. Uh, they just needed to bring the shoulder of the road up a little bit. Certainly a, a wedge and level course. Uh, you can even put that down with a, a motor grader uh, if, if you've got a good enough operator. Just be very careful to tie that center seam down as close to the, uh, the road surface as possible. But if you're going to do crack seal and pick the right road and pick the right type of materials to do your crack sealing, uh, it's such a valuable addition to the slurry surfacing uh, toolbox of options uh, that to do it improperly, uh, you're not going to gain any benefit from it at all. Uh, you're setting yourself up in these cases here for you know, such an extreme amount of crack repair material on the surface that uh, uh, adhesion uh, with the slurry surfacing materials can be an issue. And beyond that, the pavement is just obviously a little bit too far gone for what these designs uh, uh, were meant to, meant, to, meant to address. Structure and casting protection. I like to use uh, a roofing paper, roofing felt, uh, cut to size, especially for uh, uh, manholes and some of the larger appurtenances, drop inlets. Um, you can use plastic sheeting uh, that, that can be used. You just need to use something that's going to mask those appurtenances from being covered with a slurry seal or a microsurfacing. Uh, we'll see in a picture in a minute that you can identify some of these appurtenances with plastic tabs or by placing a spray paint mark on the shoulder of the road just to help in locating those uh, utilities once the slurry seal or microsurfacing is cured. Some of your smaller castings that uh, uh, might be a little bit more difficult to, to cut to size, some roofing felt, uh, such as a water valve, uh, certainly snow plowable markers. Um, some of these you can protect with, uh, with a duct tape. Um, and obviously, you know, to round out the job at its completion, uh, remove all that protection prior to opening to traffic. Uh, while you're still uh, working under a, a lane closure with traffic control, uh, it's a good time to get all these uh, 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 location devices removed. You can see here the crew had uh, covered up a drop inlet, an inline drop inlet, um, and the, uh, the resulting, resulting product uh, leaves a, uh, not only a clean appurtenance, but uh, uh, no semi-liquid slurry seal or microsurfacing gets to intrude into the grate. Um, mentioned about making a mark on the shoulder of the road uh, to locate a manhole. Uh, we'll just use the picture on the top left as an example of why you would even utilize or need to utilize some sort of a marker. Uh, half of the manhole is in the gutter line anyway, and why would you go on to uh, a, a public uh, appurtenance like a sidewalk and use a spray paint marker to locate that, uh, uh, locate that, that utility? 
uh, be mindful of where that, that type of location uh, is, uh, <laughs> is, is, is delineated. And here, it's kind of hard to tell, but the picture on the right is a manhole with some uh, uh, roof and felt cut to size. There is a white plastic tab uh, that, that will be visible for the crew to look at once the slurry seal is placed on top of that. So you can locate that, that, uh, that manhole and clean it off properly later. Prior to slurry surfacing, it, uh, it's necessary to remove certain types of, of markings and symbols, like I mentioned a minute ago. Thermoplastic paint, tape markings, and even some latex or waterborne paint markings with glass beads uh, need to be eradicated or removed uh, prior to placement of a slurry surfacing uh, material. Um, the, the surface texture uh, of those, those type of markings is just too slick for this material to stick to properly. Um, in some cases, small areas can be masked off with tape such as uh, stop bars, arrows, chevrons on speed humps and things like that. Um, but then most contracts as well are going to, uh, after the removal or eradication of any of these markings, you're going to have to put some temporary markings back in place, particularly center line markings on busier roads. So if you do have pay, pavement markings that need to be removed, uh, be sure and check the contract. Uh, you likely will have to have some sort of temporary pavement markers in place immediately. And just an example of uh, eradicating some of the uh, crosswalks and emblems and arrows uh, ahead of a, a microsurfacing job in that case. Picture on the left is kind of hard to, to, to see from where you're sitting, but uh, it has been eradicated. The old existing, pre-existing markings have been eradicated uh, and the temporary paint uh, has been, been put down uh, in the meantime. And graphically, uh, on the right-hand picture there, uh, just over time, lessons were learned. Uh, if these slick and thicker pavement markings were not eradicated prior to uh, a slurry surfacing application, uh, they will not adhere long term to some of those markings. And you can see uh, clearly uh, how the full depth of the slurry seal in this case is peeled off of the old pavement marking that was not eradicated. Concrete bridge decks, uh, maybe some visqueen or some plastic sheeting or even big, big slab of, uh, of, of roof and paper, but uh, no need to track, uh, track slurry seal uh, onto a bridge deck if you can avoid it. And here on the right, the crew is uh, protecting a concrete swale. We'll have some of those in some subdivision work. Uh, certainly just mask anything off that doesn't need to be covered with slurry. And once that tape and uh, uh, tar paper uh, are removed, you'll have a nice sharp edge. And it looks like, uh, looks like you were meaning to do it. And as you can tell by following along here that this, uh, this is going to wrap up uh, chapter three with uh, surface preparation and things that we want to do. Uh, either immediately prior to uh, the uh, application of the slurry surfacing materials or during the, the course of application, as you can see here on this last slide, um, just some things that we need to pay attention to with regard to uh, proper surface preparation. You can check with your facilitator there in the class to, uh, to see if there are any other questions that they might be able to help you with. Uh, and certainly this is the time where you can review your knowledge checks at the end of the chapter.